Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Hi, wow. everybody. <laughs> yes. All right. Nothing like uh, starting crazy. All right. Good morning. All right. Do you no sound? No sound. Um, that, that's like I'm, just right now. Hello. Yep. There you go. Okay. I think, yes, okay. we were definitely having yeah. some technical difficulties for the first couple of uh, minutes on here. So sorry. We're, uh, I think we have it worked out. Um, we couldn't get live onto Facebook this morning, so if you tried to log into Facebook and you were like, where are they? Um, apparently, there was a little glitch this morning, and then in we the process of doing that, I... Somehow disconnected this camera. Okay, I think... But they're all going at the moment. Wow, so. yes, there we go. I think we're good. Um, <laughs> weird to see that. Okay, it's good, though. Um, so what are we doing? Uh, Kimberbell, right? We're Kimber doing <laughs> Kimberbell. So welcome to Digital Dealer. Dealer, yes. So a little change um, this year. We are doing marches the last Wednesday of February, and we will continue to do that um, yes. throughout the year. That way, you guys will have a stitch out to refer to no matter when in the month. You pick versus up your having kids. to wait a couple of months or, or that kind of thing. So you yeah. will have a couple of months, a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks, yeah. Um, so that will get you um, up and running. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, I on see Facebook, a Facebook. So, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> we're going to have that the before we started. But everybody, was, everybody was red. Yeah. <laughs> they were all on YouTube. So. So this is a really cute one, um, and this would be perfect anybody if you're if you have like a little sewing room or a little craft area, um, even if you have like a little closet, <laughs> you could hang this up in there. Yeah, it's really really cute, and it is. Um, it definitely. Gives I love you... that it. Um, it's in like a machine, like a hand embroidery hoop, but we're gonna do it but in the embroidery in the machine. machine. <laughs> that just makes my day. I know. I agreed. <laughs> so I've I've been uh, contemplating some like yeah i, I told you i brought some stuff and and i was like oh, but it's hand yes <laughs> i really don't like but i i think that it's a skill that i would like to have mm -hmm. so um this makes me think about that too but right. i absolutely love that it's in a hand embroidery hoop the same yes. i i thought the same thing so we're basically going to do a whole bunch of different techniques, but we're going to do them small mm -hmm. so that you'll be able to see a lot of the different things. Yes, yeah, so a little we'll, sampler. little sampler, which is yeah. really, really cool. And we will um, talk about how to do the different things as we move through. Yes. And if you so. purchase a kit from us, um, we took a poll last year about um, sizing of the pieces. So essentially, um, you could really literally just open up your kit and then your your pieces are pretty much the size that you need them. Yeah, you can press um, them or whatever. Yeah, but... they're cut a tad bit bigger than what you actually need just to take into effect any any little starching any shrinkage or shrinkage that, that you might get. you do press um, and starch. Yes, but I basically didn't do anything else. Um, I just uh, fused the easy tee onto the back of the background. Perfect. And then starched our fabrics because they're so much easier to cut when we do that. So um, in our kit is, our kit is like $10. It also includes the actual embroidery hoop um, for you to do this. And so when I mean embroidery hoop, I mean um, like a round hand embroidery hoop, not a machine embroidery hoop. Yep, that little guy. Um, so you would need your easy T or your interfacing if you're not using easy T. And there are also uh, two thumbtacks in here because if you have a smaller hoop than the eight by 12 that we're actually working on right now, you will need to multi hoop this. So the, the design is split so that you can do it into two sections. Um, we're gonna be doing ours in the eight by 12 because we can, but if you have any questions about how that works um, and you are working through it, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We will be happy to help you. The instructions are very good. Um, and we have done multi hooping a couple times, so that part hasn't changed. But if you are brand new to uh, Kimberbell, you might not have done that before. So, um, so, good morning. Oh, all the way from Canada. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Yes, and Karen and so, Cindy and Jane and Sharon and hello Jane. Hello to everybody yeah. out there. <laughs> don't want to miss anybody. And I don't, who's Stitch in Time? It's a cute name. I feel like I know who you are, but I've stitched time. The number is not, the name is not in the top of my, my, my memory bank here at the somewhere, but yeah, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll remember it a little bit. But welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so excited to have everybody here. Yeah. And uh, so, so in your instructions, you actually get two separate um, 
sets, if you will. Yes. So because we're in the eight by 12 hoop, we are going to be at the end of the instructions and we'll be following those. So um, I won't be saying if you were in the other hoop, you'd yes. be, I won't do that because I'm not in those instructions. Just right. FYI, um, I'm on page 14 yes. of the instructions to um, get us started. Oh, Chris. Chris, hi. <laughs> um, but uh, the thing is, is that um, the detailed pictures are in the smaller hoop instructions yes, for some is... of the things. Like it'll, it'll kind of just gives you words, yes. which some of you may not be used to. Um, you so, may need to bounce if you're new to some of these techniques to yeah. see what to do or just refer to the or video. Or just refer to the video. Yes. <laughs> you could do that too. Exactly. Absolutely. So um, right. the first few Hi, steps Mindy. are just the prep, you know, fusible backing, like she said, um, and getting things um, done. The first color is going to be the butterfly. We're going to do the butterfly first. So dark blue. So many pages. Yes. So the, um, it's the two blues, yeah. yeah so we're gonna do dark, dark blue, blue first. first. All right. So. So the first thing that we're gonna stitch out is the placement line for our fabric. And then I'm gonna make an assumption that there's gonna be a tack down on that. <laughs> and yep. we're gonna go ahead and um, thread up a dark blue. Got a preference? I do not, whichever Let's one. Go dark. Dark, dark. Yep, dark, dark. Okay. Um, ES5553. Five, 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 and this is definitely one of the SNL um, original colors, right? Because it's got the color on the if top of the lid. If it's orange, yep. it is in the SNL kit. Yes. Mm. All right. So I'm going to pop the camera over here so that we can see what's going on. I was sewing on my other machine, so if I hit the go button instead of the needle threader, you will know why. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a color for this? Um, yes. What were you thinking? I think... Because this one was back here. Um, wow, I know I had one. Maybe, I think that... That'll work? Yeah. Oh, the instructions. There they went. Maybe I should find those. <laughs> you oh, might be yeah. able to get to them down there. Yeah, maybe. Excuse me. <laughs> Disappearing, Lisa. One, two. Hmm. Is that all we lost? I don't know. Okay. But um, that's all I see. <laughs> I don't know where the other one is. I feel like I've lost page 14, but. Ah, can I have the um, the base fabric? You can. Pretty Sorry, please. guys. Oh, no, no, the um, big one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm frazzled. Sorry. <laughs> All right. I had set the instructions on the embroidery arm and, and then forgot to move them. And then when the embroidery arm moved, it just pushed those little suckers right off. That will show. Hmm. Okay. I wonder where it went. I think we're okay. Okay. So the stabilizer that we're using is actually a medium cutaway. So uh, we don't use the medium cutaways a lot. Super off. We used to use a lot more, yeah. um, but they they really switched into the lightweight. Right, because it's um, been more quilty with batting and, and less added project. More battings and other foam or whatever else yep. instead. So we are now tacked in place. We're going to start the different techniques. The first one is going to be. Um, the applique, which is a cute little butterfly. So kind of a standard applique yep. piece. And I would imagine, I didn't actually look, but there is probably an SVG file for the butterfly pieces. Uh, that is probably the only one that has a file because everything else is slightly different. All right, so again, this is going to be oversized, um, but we didn't, um, 
You got plenty. Trim it out. So you've got plenty of things. We're going to completely cover that up and tack that one down. You can, of course, tape here if you would like to. Um, oh, I didn't change the needle. Did you change the needle? I did. That's why there's no sticker left on okay. the machine. Um, do you want to just rethread that while I'm doing this? Yep. Okay. Right, this is going to trim. Sure I am. I'm so prepared this morning. Let's see how these work. Got your favorite double curves? I do. <laughs> Is there any other pair no. <laughs> to be had? <laughs> Just a really small um, notch into the body of the, the butterfly there. So this design should come out on March 1st. So if you have already ordered it, um, your design will be arriving in your account right around the 1st. If you haven't purchased the design yet, you can still do so. Um, and even after the, like, you know, anytime in March or um, April or May, you can always order the design. That's kind of the beauty of these. You can just keep ordering. There's really no time limit. No. You know, we still have access to the past years and everything. So mm -hmm. um, it's a nice system the way that they have it now to put together that it's... Um, I think I'm good. Awesome. All right, so there we're trimmed. We're gonna go back and there's going to be an outline around the bottom section of this design. a great design if you are just getting into embroidery because you literally get your your toes wet in yeah all the different not all but a very good chunk of Kimberbell techniques some of the different and, techniques that are yeah. available out there um in Kimberbell and yep um other you know you're gonna run into fringe and chenille other places and, yep. and things like that but you know this basic applique um is definitely going to be uh use a lot if Absolutely. you are embroidering in the hoop there's certainly some that are just stitches but more and more have little bits of applique even if it's just small flowers or something like true. that to prevent true. from real heavy fills mm -hmm. they'll throw fabric in there instead and uh this is how you're going to do that so yeah i think the only thing they missed in here was like reverse applique yeah <laughs> they probably couldn't fit it no, we could have done reverse on the uh, on the top of the wing. Right. I mean, we could have gotten complicated. We could have. But then I couldn't have just put applique under it. Right. <laughs> True. <laughs> but yeah, that's, um, you know, I don't mean to say that this is all you can ever do if you embroider. That's not what I meant to say. But it's a nice um, smattering. smattering to get somebody... Uh, comfortable with some different techniques if yeah. they're just learning it or if you've been in it a while and haven't tried anything different right um, same thing it's a nice way to just see how different things go yep or if you've um, if you've done other people's designs and you want to see like how Kimberbell does things this is a really good way of seeing all of the different yep varieties. so those look like angel wings at the moment yes. because there's only half yeah 
That is a giant satin stitch. It is. For such a little guy, it's got a lot going on. It does. So if uh, you are learning and you're not maybe an expert trimmer yet, you're going to be just fine. Right? <laughs> Very generous. That is at least a five millimeter. <laughs> maybe four and a half, but that's big. That's that's pretty good size. I mean, usually you're around three ish. Right. Um, but that is definitely a. Uh, the only a millimeters love. I know. Right. <laughs> stitch length and stitch width. That's uh, that's how that's I recognize. That's the extent, right? Right. Yeah. Anytime somebody gives me something bigger in millimeters, I'm look. I'm thinking at it like, uh, okay, I know what five millimeters is. <laughs> So how big would? <laughs> how big would that look? <laughs> yep. It's um the color is a little the fabric. The, the fabric is slightly different. I have run into that with this particular. I should have used this one. I think. Mm. It's a the fat the thread color is a little more purpley. Yep. It is definitely a navy blue, and this is a navy green. Yeah. The fabric is like a navy green, um, just for um, all of you at home. That might not have been the best choice. So if uh, 5553 is too purpley yep. for you. I think this one might have been, is this why you put it on there? Might have been. I just, it wasn't blue, yeah. Yeah. I think that one would be better, so. Um, one three eight six is probably a better choice. All right, and I what um, else we're gonna this do. is next. So this one. Okay. Now we have uh, ES nine o three. Oh, good morning, Lisa's mom and Roxanne. Hello, hello. hello. Yep. Okay, we got more people joining us from Facebook, so it must still be working. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to know. You know, once we get started, it's hard to make adjustments. And, yeah. and for me, not, not screw something up. <laughs> it's a lot of buttons. It is a lot of buttons. You know, I'm not going to lie. If you're not here, we're probably not going live. Because <laughs> I don't know if I could get all the buttons. <laughs> There's a lot. I mean, it used to be just click here and click here. Yeah. But now you have to click here and then you have to go over here to add that camera in. And then you have to go back over there to accept that camera that you just added in over there. Yeah, we, we and, uh, upped our game a little. Yeah. I'm, I might need you to write down instructions or something because <laughs> one of these days I'm going to be like, huh? <laughs> Good morning, Dana. Well, this color blends nice. Yes. From a distance, the other one looks just fine. It's just when you actually get the light on it. It'll be fine. But, uh, I mean, butterflies are all different all colors. All different colors. Right? That's absolutely right. Shades of, um, just, uh, gonna trim this guy now. So this hoop doesn't spin on this mat. <laughs> um, hi, Miss Mary. Uh, we are using the 8x12 hoop. Um, and Karen, uh, the color number that we're using right now is ES903. I think I've ran into that problem with that particular fabric before. I think it's navy, mm -hmm. and I choose a navy thread, and it's not navy. Not a traditional navy. navy. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to hold that up to the camera so you guys can see. Um, where did I put that? So it's just a slightly wrong shade of blue. I think this one, other one would have been better. And then there's the trim for this one. So again, that was 
1386 is the color I would use to do this again. <laughs> yeah. That an outline. Stitch. Then yep. we're doing the piece. And then the piece block. block. I think we also have two blues somewhere. Yes, I hope they're not stuck to the bottom of the hoop. Well, I definitely had them this morning. One, two, three, four. Two little, oh, there, there's something on the. Yep. We, we're losing all of our stuff this morning. I we're, am having, we're, having a we're both having a rough go this morning. <laughs> That's one piece. <laughs> oh, there it is. Excuse me. <laughs> Disappearing Lisa again. Sorry. <laughs> That's a good color choice. Yeah. All right, and then what do you want for the body? Not dark gray? Is that what you were? Um, that one, I wasn't sure if that was gonna be dark enough. I also grabbed like that dark brownie bronze one, that one. I don't know what we would like better on here. They actually both look fine. They both look good. Yeah, so. Maybe we'll do the, the, the this one, and then do we'll this for this. the words. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of stitches. Yeah. And it's the medium cutaway. Some of the uh, colors that we have for our thread set were not full on the rack. Do we want to do, because we got six more coming, do we want to fill the rack and sure. only do like nine or sure. what, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right. So next we have the outline for our um, pieced guy. Yep. Um, and what is the... I actually pick, picked the peach color. I know they have the blue. Um, I don't know that I like the blue as much. I picked that isochord one because that's pretty yeah, with it. Do you do like that? that? Okay. Do. So um, this is our weird color that we have. Um, it is isochord color number 1362. I think it's actually called like shrimp or something. I think it's shrimp. Um, this one, the, the peach color that we have in the Kimberbell lineup, we could not find a really nice Floriani exquisite or brother brand. Um, that we really liked, but this one's perfect. Yes. So um, we do have spools of this somewhere around the shop. Yeah. Um, need... If somebody needs this Did color. Did we refill after we sold out? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Okay. But if we don't and you want one, we'll get you one. Yep. I'm going to call her that. Okay. I didn't put any of that. I understand it's a little but do like three. Okay. All right. And, and um we are starting oh, with and then we can the Does that work? So total of bottom piece place fabric one right side up covering one. section one Makes sense. Okay. that's covering everything because i'm not really sure where i'm at um and then 
stitch the piece to trimming placement line. So obviously this is an oversized piece and I'm not really, I think, I think this is section one here, but since I wasn't entirely sure, I just covered up the whole thing. <laughs> that looks right. <laughs> yep. I think you are correct. <clears throat> Um, shrimp is from, those are isochords, so O-E-S-D. So it's possible we have the Mettler version here somewhere. Okay. But we might have, I used it in a, in an event. <laughs> so, um. Oh, jeez. I think we may have. My dad is in the hospital again oh, with no. pneumonia. Do you want to go call and check? He's just texted me saying oh. he's doing okay, but he just wanted to let me know he was in the hospital. Good grief, dad. I'll update you when I know more. I'm doing better this morning. Good grief, Dad. Well, if you're the praying kind, give my dad a little, uh, a little, little extra, uh, extra love, love this there. morning. That would be great. Apparently, he uh, All right. so in the hospital again. This is going to be blue on the bottom. Yes. So when we do this, um, the line that's stitched is your trim line but it is also your placement line. So I'm gonna take the edge of this and I am going to, wow, that's a lot of fabric. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna cover up um, and make sure that I have that entire area filled. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna tack that down and the tack down will be a quarter inch approximately away. Oh, I didn't do that. That's not normal. We were talking about my dad. Thanks guys. Right. Okay, so I didn't bring an iron, so we're going to use this stuff here. Yep, we got our little roller and our starchy water. Hopefully this is starchy water, not just water water, but either way it'll still work. Sort of. Right. All right, so That's that our... is a fabric folding pen Yep. that has concentrated starch, just a couple drops, and then you fill the rest of the tube with water. And then I'm using a seam roller and I have a beautifully flat seam. Just like you ironed it. Just like I ironed it. So we're going to probably go the other way. Yep. Okay. Morning, Karen. I might have to rip it off. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna do the trim again. So everything above that line, I am going to take off. So. Going to get rid of a little bit of that blue there. I don't have to do the whole thing at the moment, but get rid of the bulk of it. So one thing, um, if you are new to this, the original seam sticks out here a little bit. So you can't trim 100%. So there's gonna be that little notch that kind of pokes out there. I'm gonna take my other piece of blue and center on that line. And we're gonna tack that one down. Maybe I'll put that back on later. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get that a little bit wet and then we're going to press that over with our little rolling pin. See if that helps. I feel like I have a little bit of a glow on right now. Is this what you feel all the time? Not all the time, but sometimes, <laughs> yes. Comes on sudden, doesn't it? Wow. It's like you're fine and then you're not. Fine and then you're not. And I am going to just give that a little bit of roll and love there. 
All right, so now we're going to put in our other piece of orange. So it's going to stitch this way here. And that is again going to be a cut and then where to place. Mm -hmm. So. And if your brain's like these lines are not in the right spot, you have to just trust the system because it does look really weird, weird. when you're doing it. It definitely does. Um, but it all comes together in the end. So I am now going to remove everything from again above this line. Okay. Set those aside and take my other piece of the peach. Now this you haven't really seen because Everything the other ones been... didn't didn't matter because they were uh, single or double sided I, for lack of a better description. Need to make sure I put that pretty side down. Pretty side down, absolutely. Right on that line. And then we'll tack that one in place. And if any of you out there are tapers, you can tape. It's if just a lot of on and off. Um, and this isn't like a stitch that moves your fabric. Not much. So um, unless your unless your foot hits like the edge of the fabric somehow, true statement. It's going to stay pretty uh, pretty well in place. Exactly. A light finger will. But I could be wrong. Could be. It's okay. It's the same effect, really. They're already starched. Yeah. All right. There we go. And we're going to repeat now and do the, the two side point. Tiny little line. I know. It's so small. <laughs> So I'm small. not used to doing this small. Right? Usually it's like a cheap. I was wondering what fabric goes there. Those guys. Those guys. I'm like on the picture it looks super white, but it's like a it's a pale pink. I should keep going. Might as well. It'll be in your way later anyways, right? Yeah. All right, we're gonna trim. And then this is again, a solid. So sides aren't going to come into play, but this would also be a pretty side down point if you were doing um, a print fabric. And pack that little guy. arm out of the way. Oh, whatever. <laughs> They're okay. I think they need to be like pink and purple for me. <laughs> yeah, we were just saying, I don't know that I would have chose these colors if I were making my own sample, but um, we just followed the picture instructions, so. All right, and one more piece. As much as it's fun to like skirt the system and be rebels and choose our own fabrics, every time we do that, it Somebody's comes like, back but, to bite us in the butt. Yeah, so we don't do that anymore for these. <laughs> no. Because then, you know, your kit didn't match ours or right. whatever, so. Um, We'll tell you our opinion, but we're probably not going to do our opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but we both like 
I would probably do like a purple and a teal or purple a shade and a teal of be, teal. Yeah. Um, but it is, you know, if you're trying to vary against the other colors, so each sample stands on its own. Right. Um, you wouldn't necessarily want to do them all in the same shades of, of fabric either. So. Right. I don't know. That'd be it'd be fun. Like a I think having different a, values of the same color would yes, be cool. Different values of the same would be really sharp. Yeah. Okay. So we have all four points and we have our two large points. This next stitch is going to um, simply do a squaring stitch. And then because there's a satin stitch that's going around here, that'll be what we trim up against. We wouldn't normally generally trim this. We yeah. would generally leave all of that and then we have a quarter inch seam allowance around the outside. Right. So if this was a loose piece, you wouldn't trim at this point. You would just um, remove it from the hoop and then give yourself a quarter inch seam to sew it to some other square. But that's not how we're doing this. Right. So I have to remove all of that excess so that it will have a satin stitch around it instead. to get the repair page up. Mm -hmm. Going to be some random hangover little triangles that you'll need to trim as well. <laughs> um, good morning, Kim. She said, she's late. What are we making? So this is the digital dealer for March, which comes out March 1st. Um, and this is a little sampler project. It's a bunch of different embroidery techniques that you can um, frame sort of in like a bamboo embroidery type hand embroidery hoop. So we are on the second part of the design. So the first one, the Butterfly was just standard applique, and then oh, we did one. like a little piecing sampler here, and now it's going to finish the edges of that. And then we have um, we have fringing and chenille, and decorative stitches, and red work. So we have a couple different um, techniques left to go. All right. Topping. Completely covering the piece block. Yeah, I skipped that. Yep. See what happens when you don't turn the page? Page, yeah. Um, not really. What? I'm not really sure. I mean, if you did it right, you shouldn't have any loose pieces. Right. I don't know. I hope that's super wide again. So apparently you're supposed to put a piece of wall, like topper, topper before on you do this top of this before you do the sand stitching. We we did not turn the page before I hit go read the instructions beforehand. <laughs> I mean, you know us in instructions, right? Um, Hi, Miss Mardi. What's the weather like in Washington State? It is. Um, we're going through the, the the time in Michigan where you oh. get up in the morning and you're not sure if you should dress for summer, uh, fall, spring, or winter, or all, or of, all the of the above, or it could snow and rain all at the same time. Yep, we don't know what's going to happen. No, it, it's a it's a guess. So um, the wash away topper is for the squaring stitch. So you know where I was going around and holding it. Oh yeah, yeah. That's why they had that. Again, I wouldn't use a topper for that. I would just do what you did. Do what I did. Yeah. But that makes more sense. I'm like, why would you put a topper on? <laughs> See what you get for not reading. Right. All right, satin outline. We are next going to stitch leaves and stem fill. So yeah. 
So I picked a green and then I also picked like a, a tealy color. I wasn't sure. Um, no. That is really weird. That must be the one that you were thinking. Maybe. Um. I feel like there were a lot more colors on there this morning. <laughs> this is everything. I swear it is. Uh. Um, so you've got two pinks for the flower. Yeah, I wasn't sure that if we peach liked and... the pink or if we wanted to do purple because I did grab purple too. Like if we wanted to do a pink flower and a purple flower instead of the orange. Or... Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, let's do that. I feel like there should be some purple in there for us. And then for that, do you like that green or do you want a greener green? Or green green. I oh, don't like the green green. What about the, there's like another lighter spring green in there. What about that one? I like that. Have a good walk. Don't get blown away. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, very cold and stormy in Ontario. Oh yeah, that's definitely. Sharon is in Northern California. Yeah, we got all kinds of weather going on. Crazy, you never know what's going to happen, yeah. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Okay, yeah. so that little guy is done. So again, that satin stitch isn't typical of the technique. Right. It's just for finishing for this block. So if you go to do this technique somewhere else, and you're like, where's the satin stitch? That's not normal. No, not normal. All right, so the next stitch is going to do a little set of flowers over here, and we're going to do the leaves. Yes. Yeah. So. And what color is that? We are using ES1619, which is a nice springy green. Jimmy John's, order now. <laughs> <laughs> a little early. <laughs> All right, so we have, this is a couple minutes. Yes. So a couple of leaves gonna happen here but this is for the flowers. So the flowers are going to be fringe. So if any of you have not done fringe before, you're gonna want some of this. You're going to want some of this. What is this? So this is... I plopped it up on the other camera. You can... Just put it up there. Yeah, it might be easier than trying to figure out where... This Vanish. is Vanish. There we go, right there. Yep. Vanish. And what that is, is it vanishes. It's water soluble. Yes. And so um, once you are done with that type of stitch that you need to release the bobbin stitches, mm -hmm. you get those wet and they come away and you have pretty flower petals. So much easier than trying to trim away the bobbin thread. You know, with that, it's like, which ones am I supposed to clip? Mm -hmm. um, and even that, it's, it's, not, it's very messy comparatively. Yes. So um, you'll notice that um, we have this in a bag. The reason being is you don't want to use this when you didn't need to. No. So we keep our wound bobbin and the spool in a little Ziploc bag. It also keeps the moisture out um, from sitting and having it stored. So that is um, the secret to success when it comes to doing fringe. Mm. We've got uh, three of seven leaves, and then, then we need a stem. So we're yes. just under halfway there. Yeah, it looks like um, yesterday it, uh, and today are, it looks like you might be getting what we had last night in Canada. Maybe that's the direction that it's moving. We had some crazy thunderstorms. A couple little tornadoes touched down over um, on it our was, side. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, my, uh, my big dog was terrified. You wouldn't think that looking at this big dog, he he would be afraid of anything. But, right. Um, and he never used to be. That's the thing that we're not uh, sure what happened is he wasn't afraid of storms for a long time. So we think that he, I say got stuck, but like I was telling Sarah, we've got right. a dog door. He can get in, but we've got a very large fenced in backyard. So I think he was up, quote unquote, on the other side of the yard, and we had like a storm come on, come on quick, and lightning and thunder and, and torrential downpours that he was stuck outside, and now he's just anytime the thunder happens, and the oh, he's just he turns into a little scary cat, right? And uh, 
and that was at, I don't know, midnight, 1 a.m. <laughs> he was just vibrating the whole bed. He was shaking so hard, and he was crying, and poor little guy. Yeah, that's awful. What are we doing? Oh, my brother is now texting uh, me to tell me about my dad. Gotcha. One more leaf after this one, and then just the stem stitch that goes through the whole thing, and we will start on the flowers. So it looks like small flower fringe detail. So this top thread and that bobbin is going to be after this. My dog used to be scared, and she is 15 and deaf now. And now she's, she's like right through. through. Yeah. We got a long way to go. He's like uh, <laughs> six. He's not going to be deaf for a long, long time. time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just hoping he gets over it because it's funny because Jeff even said something. He's like, I hope I can fall asleep before the storm comes mm -hmm. and hope he won't wake me up. Right. Yeah, that didn't happen. No. He woke us both up. Which is okay. I mean, he was scared and he needed his people, but um, he planted his butt right between us and then shook. <laughs> Holy crow, the whole bed shook for a long time. <laughs> this is a really neat design. It's fun. You don't usually see all of these different things in this small of a space. So right. I mean, it's a cool. Um, My brother does not understand what I'm doing. You're doing what? My brother does not understand You're what doing I'm doing. What? What? Yes. <laughs> yes, just like the kids. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. <laughs> How do you explain that? <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. So we are going to change two things at this point. We are going to change our top thread to what we want our fringe petals to be. So we're working on the small flower first. So we're going to leave that pink because that's what it was. Does that work? Sure. Okay. But more importantly, we need to put that water soluble bobbin in. It is important. It's very important. So, do you want me to take that or? I you think got I room got it. it. Oh, we'll make it work. All right. You know, four hands are great until they're all in the same space. That doesn't really help. <laughs> Finder. There we go. So um, we're going to do two fringe flowers, mm -hmm. which means we're going to have two pieces. So again, we have water soluble bobbin in and just a standard, we're using light pink. I didn't say the color. I'm sorry. Um, top thread, 30 something. Um, 302. That's what. All have. right. So these large stitches are going to have a water soluble bobbin so that when we need to remove the bobbin thread it'll just come away and then our thread will come up to the top what i do when i'm doing fringe i don't you don't do a lot of fringe do you i mean occasionally <laughs> I typically do fringe when I'm like not in embroidery. Like I add it to like mm -hmm. regular applique um, and add it as an accent versus being the main thing. Yes, yes. So it might seem a little over what done. Yes, I, I guess. But when I take that bobbin out to switch back to the regular bobbin, even though I'm going to use it again a stitch later, yes. I put it back in the bag. I don't just set it on my countertop because I don't want to get it confused with anything else. So I literally, and I am a stickler on that personally. Um, I am, you know, it comes out of the machine, it goes into the bag, period. 
So you guys can do whatever you want. Right. But I can tell you that if you accidentally use water soluble and then it gets wet and all of your stitches fall out, you're going to be super, super sad. Right. So don't use the wrong one on accident. Yes. And the way I prevent that from happening is as soon as um, I... I think it actually went to the next one. Did the next really? color. Yeah. So, oh. so we don't have to... So we. It is orange. Yeah. See, I should read the instructions farther. I could have sworn that was pink thread, which is what threw me off. Stitch the larger fringe detail. Yeah. So we don't have to take it out. <laughs> Yay, Kimberbell. Yay, Kimberbell. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that doesn't work, though, depending upon where you're... True. Um, yeah, sometimes you can't. Yep. Yeah. Do we want um, darker on the outside this time? Sure. Okay. So that's this one. Yeah. This is 1324. Good job for paying attention to what was on the screen. Because then we would have made that mistake. It happens. Yes. That I was just talking about. So you also have to know what your machine is going to do. <laughs> I missed. So close. So close. So far away. I'm telling you. The struggle. It's real. So I hope you guys enjoy knowing that we do dumb stuff too. <laughs> it's like, what? Oh. You know, it's usually because we're talking and doing other things. Not paying but, attention. That um, never happened. Definitely right? wasn't paying attention there. So good good thing Sarah was. Sadly, when I'm at home and I'm not talking to somebody, I have the same thing that happens. <laughs> I, I'm not really sure what the running stitch up to that was, though. I don't know. It was super important. It was, um, it was definitely not important. Not really sure. Not really sure what that was about. I guess they really wanted to start at the top of the flower and not at the side. Wow, this is a hot mess. It is. Not like us this morning. All tangled up. <laughs> All tangled and do doesn't know where where to go. Okay. Oh. So if you are following along in your instructions, this is color stop number 24, and we are on page 16 in the instructions because, again, we're using the 8 by 12 instructions. Right. Um, had I had big pictures, I would have known that. <laughs> but that's okay. No blame. That's all on me. Um, so as soon as this is finished, and it's going to be here in just a second. Yeah, this actually stitches pretty quick. Yes. Um, we are going to stitch the centers. And then it's going to tack everything in. And that will uh, basically stitch and it'll catch one part of these big stitches and that will hold them in place. So even after we release the bobbin threads, um, it holds one half or one end yep. of those large satin stitches in place. Yeah. And um, you get like the pretty loops at the end versus like if the straight cut, line then pieces. You get straight edge yep. pieces. Yeah. Oh, now it's going to completely go to something else. Now we're going over and we're doing the rainbow part. Is that supposed to be fringe too? Yeah. Stitch large flower it center tack down line and rainbow arch. Okay. Yep. So we got to take the, that rainbow arch in the center can't be fringe. So that's got to come out. Right. No, we definitely have to change the bobbin thread. Okay. But we're um, going to do part of our rainbow and purple. Work for you? It works for you. Okay. The more purple, the merrier. Absolutely, positively. This is. Uh, yeah, not should I make just it get us a new one while we're at it? Just put a fresh one in as long as we're changing. We're just uh, running really low on bobbin thread on that last bobbin, so we're just going to put a. It's not playing nice. <laughs> is it? This is a hot mess this morning. Oh my goodness. Ooh, there we go. I wonder what it would be like to actually sleep all night and how well my brain might work. <laughs> okay, so we have, oh, didn't change the top thread. We changed the bobbin. Oh, we did. Yep. So um, we're going to put in ES388, which is a little bit lighter. And this will also stitch the large arch, which is just, sorry, you're done. Um, just stitching in the center there. They call that decorative stitches. Yes. All right, now we're gonna go. So this is just a little bit lighter purple.
Here goes the largest arch of the rainbow, which is decorative stitches. It's like a fairly heavy. Looks like a fill stitch with a pattern in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of a good running stitch on the edge. <laughs> yeah. Underlay stitches. Yep. We'll make uh, embroidery like a commentating sport here. <laughs> those underlay stitches, boy. <laughs> They got Boy. those directions going right. That, that looks fantastic, doesn't it, Sarah? It sure does. It sure does. That's exactly how I would do it. Absolutely. <laughs> just really enjoy watching something like that stitch, don't you? Yes, it just uh, <laughs> I can't do it. makes me super excited. <laughs> I can't wait to see what's next. What's going to be next? <laughs> Sorry if any of you are watching us for the first time. <laughs> what are those crazy ladies doing? Just trying to fill the time. We're just filling in the blank space here, guys. <laughs> Good, uh... oh. It must be really weird to see like closed captioning. <laughs> you know, I've had that come up on mine. Yeah. Randomly. And it is very entertaining because it is not always what we said. Mm -mm. Um, Yes, this is definitely uh, like a pattern, a patterned fill stitch in that space. Yeah, and because of the amount of stitches, that's why there was all of that underlay in there. Yeah, it um, does make a big difference, though. Oh yeah, a lot less pulling happens with all that. So you know, this is not fused. Right. So you know, if you didn't have that underlay, even just having it sitting here yeah, would really make stretch. that stretch and pull. Um, um, for all the different directions that that would be getting yanked right now. Right. So, uh, the fusible is, of course, a big part of what's going to make this work. Yeah. But the underlay for this particular type of stitch is very, very important. Yeah. Fusible plus starch. Yep. Those two things do help. Giving it a little bit more substance to stitch on. So, I definitely like the peach here. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if the reason they did blue was to so that you wouldn't see any show through. Right, maybe, but I'm okay with it. But it's, I think it's still pretty good. Yeah. But if you are a quilter, you'll notice that that is perfect points there. Um, and we didn't really have to do anything to make that happen. The machine does that for you. So that's the advantage of doing piecing and, and folded fabric technique like that in the hoop mm -hmm. is you get those perfect points every time. Yeah, it's kind of like foundation paper piecing. You it get, um, it, that's basically what this is in the hoop is foundation it's just, paper piecing. Yep, it's just done in the hoop for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, and so now, now we're going to do, do the pink. pink. So we're going to do this one. That will is... do the smallest arch of the rainbow. ES305. I like this color. This is 388. It's a nice purple. So there's not too many bad purples. <laughs> I mean, I in, set, in fairness. I sent my brother the Facebook link. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, so he's probably like, oh my God. <laughs> I uh I could have been okay never seeing that. <laughs> I mean, it's a good one to watch first. Right. <laughs> To make fringe flowers, you can just cut top stitches to make it frilly. 
Mm, no, because when you start cutting the top stitches, then the sti if if they're not anchored in different places, then um, you'll start losing all the stitches. Everything will just fall out. And if we were to cut the top stitches on here, you you get a, a slightly different look. Um, if you cut the so bobbin you would thread, see the, the bobbin threads wouldn't immediately. You would see the ring, right? Of of those other stitches that are there. Yep. And if you, they might stay, and you don't want them to stay. Right. Um, okay. Well, that was pretty quick. We're now going to move on to chenille technique because why would we finish one thing before we move <laughs> on to the that. next? Um, so. Um, I mean, you're certainly welcome to play and see how that works. You wouldn't get as long of a fringe, which is part of what makes that so pretty. Yep. You would end up with really, really short, short pieces. pieces. Um, and they wouldn't look um, fluffy at all. Because there's it, not rows there of stitches wouldn't, in there. There wouldn't be enough there to really fluff. Right. Um, so I, I don't think it would give you the look that you're we're going for anyways yep um because we'll be dis um because we'll be dissolving the bobbin stitches keep in mind that there's thread that goes about halfway sorry, the length what you're doing um of your flower underneath so the flowers will be substantially fuller that's what lisa was talking about as opposed to just being this size um here i'm covering up what you're showing no, i'm good. so sorry it's all good it's all good but if you were doing a sewing one, then you could just do that. As long as you anchored yourself down at the bottom, you could just cut at the top. Just checking. Make Since sure. I was trying to move out of the way. Okay. I was like, did I get the take up lever? <laughs> okay, now we're doing our heart and this is chenille. So, let's see. All right, so in your kit, if you have ours, you have a piece that's long. Long. All right. Um, we aren't even going to cut, I think. Yep. All right. So I am going to just make sure that we're going to cover everything. Should work. And I am folding back three layers, and then it's just going to work from there. Mm -hmm. So. We're going to um, tack the base layer down. When you're doing uh, chenille, they're going to have basically four layers. And the first one is separate. I have a lot of people that will put all three down here. Um, and then it doesn't chenille. And then it doesn't chenille. So um, you need to be patient. Yes. <laughs> so I'm gonna need to trim that excess off anyways. True. So we have to have our base. I got to get a base decorative ditch. stitching, right? Yep. So we're going to remove the excess here. And again, this is one layer of the four. This hoop doesn't spin on this. <laughs> it's, um, All right, so I'm not putting these in yet. We're going to do a decorative stitch around the outside edge. It's usually a candle wicking. Is that what this is? Sure looks like it. Okay. And so we're going to get that done.
So even after we chenille these pieces, this is going to remain underneath. So you have that nice solid base. Mm -hmm. If you um, don't do this step, you would end up seeing your background, whatever, through, through the chenille and it yeah. doesn't have that full, effect. Yeah. really pretty look to it. So it is important you don't skip this step when you're doing this type of um, stitching. All right. We're going to now place the three remaining. I just want to make sure they didn't change something on me because I feel like they're jumping all over too, mm -hmm. just like my brain, my brain is. is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're now going to take and place three, one, two, three layers right over top of our um, base. And the first thing it's going to do is an outline. And again, you can tape that if you are a taper, for sure. All right, we now need, that is a basting stitch. So that should be larger than your standard stitch because eventually we're gonna remove that. Mm -hmm. um, just not yet. <laughs> so depending upon your scissors, um, you may have a really hard time going through more than one layer at a time. So you can um, just do one at a time, or if you think you can do more, that's up to you. So there's not a right or a wrong there. It's just a matter of, you know, how, how good are your scissors and, right. and whatnot. So that's really what that's gonna depend upon. And um, these, I have to find the sweet spot. <laughs> Am I still in the, mm -hmm. okay. All right, so I now have three pieces on top of the base and I can see the, um, the candle wicking stitches a little bit. Mm -hmm. That so is kind of popping out yep, around the edge. They should be, um, the next is going to just be the, the cut lines or the where not to cut lines. Yeah. But in between lines. Yes. So to complete this, you would want um, some good scissors because again, you're going to have multiple layers then. And you will also need a seam ripper. And you will need some sort of scissor or a way to cut into those chenille lines. So yeah. I do, I, I did find my chenille tool. <laughs> so um, I will show you, there is a, a tool made for doing this and making that a little bit easier for you. Um, but um, fuzzies. Yeah. Where we're still going to stitch. <laughs> <laughs> Red fabric really it's fuzzed. It did. So we can see it. Yeah. See, we'll relax when we pull that up. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe it'll get worse. I don't know. All right. So um, this next piece is going to be the red work. And red work is typically done in red. But it doesn't have to be. Right. Um, we are going to use the same color. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're just going to go ahead and stitch. Red work is generally outlines, mm -hmm. um, and not real heavy stitching. Um, this happens to be a sewing machine. <laughs> I 
He's obviously not watching. Nope, he's not watching. Once I got there, it's hard to unget there, right? Yeah. So what did your brother say? Nothing after the question marks. <laughs> so I just sent him the pic. I sent him the link. <laughs> no response. No response. Which this color is a little bit more of a burgundy, probably than red. Right. But we just decided we were going to keep it matches matching yeah a little bit of detail here uh, maybe that was the bobbin pulling up but that's actually the background fabric that you're seeing between I think we have one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Margie's, uh, that's very nice. All of a sudden we got super quiet, right? We ran out of things to say. How about everybody hitting the thumbs up button for an awesome demo? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> There's a lot of little detail in this little guy. There is more than I was expecting. You're right. It is one and maybe a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. All right, now we've got some more decorative stitches in the center. Um, we're gonna do this pretty teal color. So that red was number one, two, four, three, by the way. Um, Sarah was talking about fringe stitches, so I didn't say that when I was threading it. <laughs> um, and this is ES907. And this is gonna be like a little flower. This is a rung in between the two that we've done already on our little rainbow, so we're almost done with the stitching part and then um, we'll show you the little chenilling technique and how to get rid of the just that beautiful eight minute words yeah to go but yeah so the words in the body are the same color oh okay you still okay with that one sure This is pretty. Those are little flowers. So there's definitely going to be some running type stitches. Um, so do pay attention to your bobbin thread. Because um, if you're uh, running a fast game on your bobbin thread, you may have some bobbin thread popping up. True, um, true. With the type of stitches that are in here. through the camera <laughs> <laughs> sorry i was going to be all right and now we're going to go back to the shrimpy color this is ice accord number one three six two that pretty like peachy color
Dave loves the sun. <laughs> <laughs> that one? This one? I think this one. I've been watching The Crown. Yeah. Diana just died. It was such a surprise and shock. I, I, I cried and cried. I'm just kidding. Sorry. That was <laughs> not very nice. I'm sorry. <laughs> Aquaman is on... Uh max which is what that's hbo and cinemax HBO. now or mm -hmm. something yeah so i think we're gonna watch we haven't we didn't go see it so i think we're gonna no. watch it tonight no um we watched uh did you see oppenheimer i did not um we watched that i don't know about a week or, or so ago i was i don't know i i mean obviously i knew you know you know you what know happens, what's happened, but, right? right they they uh you know they don't blow up the world when they are testing it and Nevada, but uh, it was interesting. Um, it was an interesting perspective on yep. how it was. I thought it was very interesting that um, Robert Downey Jr. You want to put a dark bobbin in? He does, yes. Um, you want to put a dark bobbin in for these little ones? Sure. All right. Um, Do we have a dark bobbin? That's a great question. We used to have a dark bobbin. Did we use it? So this is going to do, um, actually, while we're looking for that, I'm going to go ahead and stitch the... Um, okay, I have this, which is darker, but... Um, yes. Huh. I have bobbins over here, but I don't have anything that's like black or... So that this is the body of dark. the the butterfly, um, but when you do um, lettering that is that small, a lot of times your bobbin thread will come up, and uh, so we are going to. Um, do we want to run something? We want to. We can run. One. There's probably an empty bobbin somewhere. I have, like I said, there's a bunch of bobbins over here. There's just nothing dark okay. gray or black. There's red and green and purple and blue and orange. Um, white, nothing empty. Do you have something that is empty? I will in a second. Okay. It's just continuing, isn't it? Mm hmm. Yes. Excuse me. <laughs> Lisa trick again. Hello. It's appearing Lisa. Oh, for crying out loud. Got a little excited. Pulled too hard. So we're just going to quickly run a bob in here with this same color. So a lot of times when you have um, running stitches or letters that are running stitches, basically, so they're smaller and thinner things, you will see that little bit of bobbin thread coming up in between each of the stitches. And that we're just doing this to... Oh, that did not work. Stop. <laughs> we are having a day. We got a sloppy bobbin. Yep. <laughs> it's going good. So why don't you show them how to, sh you could probably chenille in the I can probably chenille. Or... Well, I can at least work on starting it. Anyway. Yeah. Um, maybe. We are so prepared today. It is absolutely crazy. And so when you're doing chenille, the first thing that you'll want to do is remove that exterior bobbin stitch from 
the top layer. So catch it and then work your way around. You are not removing the stitch from that piece number one. This can sometimes feel challenging because it's hard to see, you know, if you're using a matching thread, which is what we would, you know, generally recommend for this, but it's sometimes hard to see where those are actually going in and out at. Okay, one bobbin thread ran. <laughs> Yeah, then um, we can show that part. And then if you can show a little bit of the fringe part, then if they don't want to stick around for the uh, eight minute stitch out of the rest of the words, they'll know exactly how they're supposed to finish this. Absolutely. So I guess that there was method to the madness, right? Absolutely. We planned it that way. All right, once you have that, you can either take your scissors, so you can see that there are, can you see yep. that the lines? Okay, and what you're going to do is cut right in the center of each of those lines. So you're gonna cut right here and here and here and here. The outside edges are just going to kind of get frayed on their own. You can use your scissors to do that, or you can use a tool that was actually designed for that. So this is a chenille tool, and it's actually called a slash cutter. Mm -hmm. which I love the name. It's like, I'm going to slash, right? So what this does is it has this long tail here, and it will go right inside. And then it's got a rotary that cuts on top of that plastic there. So... I'm not doing that on my hand. No. <laughs> Sorry. So basically you push your piece all the way through here and then you just push down and it cuts all the way through. And so it makes doing this super, super easy compared. So then we have all of those pieces and then you're just going to um, fray and, and um, a nail file works really well for this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, an eraser works too. Erasers work. If you have a seam ripper with one of those jelly end mm -hmm. things that are pickup yep, threads, that it will, that, that rubber tip then those will work as well. But the idea is that you're going to get all of those pieces separated. And I, I would spend much more time to make that look pretty, but you're going to fray out all of those loose edges. And that's what gives you the chenille look. Mm -hmm. On our beautiful flowers here, we have water soluble. It looks just like your standard bobbin because it looks white on the back. And so what we're looking at is the rings right here and right there. So what we want to do to remove your, there's one, yeah, that little matte piece if you want to stick it underneath it. Oh, thank you. Going to give myself a working space that's not going to push in um, since I'm not done stitching. I don't want to <laughs> don't want to shift Pop anything in the hoop. No. So um, again, if I didn't use water soluble and I had just a standard bobbin here, I would want to cut all of those white pieces. But since I did use water soluble, I am going to get them wet, and I'm going to give it some pressure. So it needs to be wet and then give it a little bit of a rub. And what's going to happen is those threads literally dissolve. And I'm not gonna do the whole thing because again, I don't want everything to distort in the hoop. 
So um, you can see very clearly that there's a, a much wetter spot um, right over here on the edge. Um, what I do now is I turn and you can see the wet coming through there. And I take, I, I use my seam ripper. You mm -hmm. can use a yeah. lot of things, but I use the um, outside edge of the seam ripper, not on the inside. And what I do is I gently pull those threads and I just have to find where I was at. There we go. Um, to the top, very gently. And what I end up with are little loops. And when you have that all the way around, then you have your floral poof. Mm -hmm. And there. you can see how they stick out a little bit further than yep. just the rim of the design. Because they're um, not being cut. So you end up with a little bit longer fringe and you get that nice curved yep. loop instead of straight edges there because I didn't cut anything. Mm -hmm. um, that is how that works. Exactly. So um, chenille, um, you stitch like we talked about in there and then cut after removing the basting and cut in between each of the lines. Fringe, you're going to remove the basting stitch. That's not what I meant to say. The bobbin threads that are water soluble and then pull those threads to the top. And now we're gonna go back and stitch Finish. the words. So um, I definitely made a bigger mess than I planned. And there's going to be words stitched in some of those places. So, okay, I think we're good. So here we have all of the lettering. So at this point, um, it's an eight minute stitch. So if you are uh, in a rush to, to head out, you certainly can. Yep. The um, nothing magical is really gonna happen past here. We do have a matching bobbin in so that we have a nice bold letter instead of having little white uh, pieces popping up in there. Um, once you have your fringe done, we already have our chenille basically done. Um, you can uh, press everything to make sure it's as smooth as possible, and then you can place that in an, a hoop. Yep. And then once you get it in the hoop, uh, you'll have this circle as your guide to where to hoop it. Then you can trim the excess fabric. I like to put it in the hoop first and then trim, yep. versus trying to trim it yep. and then put it in the hoop. So. But your hoop will be the same size as those basting stitches. So the basting stitch um, that was there originally is going to be your guide. Yep. And um, you can then, once you have it fixed in there, you're probably not gonna be taking it back out. You could then run a bead of like hot glue along the back just to make sure nothing shifted and mm -hmm. everything stays put. Yep. And that's, that's how you're gonna finish this. It's um, pretty straightforward. Um, and like we said, there's like an eight minute stitch here. So yep. we're gonna hang out here. If you have any questions, feel free to pop those up. Yep. And super um, cute. You could finish this like um, month one if you wanted to have a pillow. Uh, this would be perfect for the round pillow. Add a little ruffle around the yeah, outside absolutely. edge of that. Um, so you don't have to put it in. You don't have to put it in, in an embroidery hoop. hoop if you don't no. want to. Um, if you're not, you'll probably want to take out that first stitch. Right. Um, or maybe use a different color, mm -hmm. um, you know, so you we, yeah. we didn't care because we we're going to put it in a hoop, right. so we're not going to see that. Um, but you certainly can remove that if you would like to. Um, it is a basting stitch or just use a blended color instead of, um, instead of navy blue. Yes, instead of the, the color that we used. So we have talked about standard applique. Um, basically piecing in the hoop, which is like a folded fabric, so yep. quilting in your hoop. Standard decorative stitches, chenille, red work, and fringe. Again, if you don't have water soluble, we highly recommend that you get water soluble, mm -hmm. but you can create fringe without. It's just going to give you a different look. Um, the pieces won't be as long, and you'll probably have um, straight edge pieces instead of the nice little loops. Yep, for sure. So, um, but those are all of the different techniques that are built into here. And uh, that's that's what we've got for you today. Mm -hmm. So. All right, well, um, I think we're, we still have 
quite a few things to go, but what yeah. do we have? Like maybe another two minutes? Should we let it finish stitching? We can let it finish stitching. Yeah. yeah. So Nothing crazy is happening. No, us. this afternoon we're going to be alive again. And we're going to, um, this is the last of the embroidery, embroidery month. month. So we're going to be talking advanced embroidery techniques and features. And what's in your machine. What's in your machine and how to go about using those things. So that'll be fun. Um, next month is quilting month. So we have four weeks of quilting and then we'll be doing April project. The which, last Wednesday of the last March. last Wednesday of March, which, what is April? Do you remember? Do you remember what April is? DD. I don't. If you give me point two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> One Mississippi. All right, I, I was really generous there. How you doing? Okay, April is the fold up couch for paint brushes. That's right. Yes, that makes sense. Wow, I'm super popular. <laughs> I don't usually get this many so phone calls April and uh, is text messages. The, um, roll bag, mm -hmm. is that right? Yep. Yeah, so um, that's what we will be doing on the last Wednesday morning of March, we'll be doing that. That is April's project. Mm -hmm. um, Those are definitely tiny words. Yeah, I'm glad we changed it. Yeah. We would have definitely seen a lot of white. For sure. So I recommend that you do that. Yeah. <laughs> because it definitely would have. Um, Mother's Day. Um, so um, we don't have anything specific planned for Mother's Day. Um, What? Your mom is going to teach a class? My Mother's Day, my mom's going to teach a class. Did you know that? You can take that up with Tucker, mom. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, this would, I mean, in my opinion, I think my mom would personally like this because yeah. my mom's into embroidery. Right. But, um, you know, this would certainly be a great, um, oh, the gift card. Yes. That's May. Is it May? The that would be what we do in. Is it Mother's Day in May? Yeah, but that's the gift card holders. So that'll be the end of April. That'll be the end of April. Yes. So sorry, I was not going. I, we already tried to explain. Our brains aren't firing really great this morning. <laughs> yes. So we have the roll up, and then we have the gift card. And then holder. the gift card holders. The gift card holders are super super cute. What weight water soluble thread do you use? Extra or light? I don't really think it matters. It doesn't. Whichever one you can get your hands Whichever on. Whichever one is in stock when you order it, it's fine. <laughs> um, it literally matters not. Your mom. I doubt anyone would learn from my teaching. <laughs> what? Aww. I think that. I didn't say it had to be a sewing class. You can teach knitting and then everybody yeah, can, can learn. It can be a knitting class. It can be knitting class for Mother's Day. <laughs> yes. Maybe I can try again. I was trying. It was too uptight <laughs> to knit. You? Me? No. <laughs> no. Um, I can definitely see where your gauge might be a little <laughs> off, but. Um... Yeah, she told me to come back when I was older and calmer. <laughs> so we actually had knitting class uh, one Christmas. We all got the huge, huge needle. Needles. And um, mom taught us how to cast on and, and yeah. how to just do your basic, um, basic stitching. So mm -hmm. there you go. You can teach that one. We'll see if anybody's interested. We'll let you know. <laughs> uh, Happy Mother's Day. You have to do this. Yeah. <laughs> uh. All right. We are rounding third. This is the last of the technique names. And then we just have machine embroidery has my mm -hmm. um, that goes to the top. You know, they could just do jumps. It would be okay. Right. <laughs> oh, this is one of those times when you're like, are you sure my machine stitching as fast as it possibly can? Yes. Yes, because yes, it is. This is why you turn off the jump stitch or the thread cutter. The thread cutter. Would be a good time to do that, but it's now a little late. Now it's too late, yeah. 
Yeah. I'm not going to get in us a whole lot at this point. No. So, um, but definitely recommend that you change out your bobbin to a dark um, matching or dark at least uh, bobbin for that. So this last bit is again the words at the top that say machine embroidery has my and of course leads into the heart. So. Yeah. Should go a tad bit quicker. <laughs> she said maybe knitting. <laughs> <laughs> or not. That is a crazy stitch. Yes it is. That's a weird M. Oh, you know, it goes with the curve, though. Mm -hmm. This is so cute. It is very cute. We put a little bit of a color twist on it because, you know, we're us. So hard to follow the instructions. You don't even know. <laughs> we used all the fabrics that were in the kit, though. Yes. I didn't change any of it. So I, I definitely think that I would use a white or a dark gray oh that new art gallery that dark gray one Ooh, with like the like little perfect. stitches in it yeah. that would be cool so we did get some new fabric in um sarah is uh gonna spearhead but i mean i'll i'll pitch in as yeah as we need everywhere too but she's gonna run the black of the month again um and found a beautiful new fabric mm -hmm. so we're carrying a new line um yeah. not like a line but some, some from yeah. a new and oh is it nice fabric yeah i should and, let me grab a sample um, yeah, of the some. oh and so the um it's beautiful fabric and we we've got it in a, in just a small smattering of colors and then there we also picked up from them a um Bolt of binding? Yeah. Is that how you describe yeah. that? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, and it gives you cut lines and it is binding fabric that has different designs and whatnot. So um, it's got a line right through the middle, which is where you would cut at. Mm -hmm. And then you would sew those pieces together and create your bindings yep. from that. But why is that cool? Because the fabric is like, well, first of all, people struggle with binding. So this is a good way of doing it. But we should flip to the other camera and you can show how good it is. That is a, the beginning of a bolt. So it's not super um, straight, but she's going to fold it kind of on the edge. Look at how cute these are. And so depending on the direction that you fold it and put it on will depend upon like the little the words, the words or, or the, the decorative the stitches. Decorative stars. Yep. So super cute. And so, so we have it for sale in one yard increments. And like one yard would do, if you cut it, nine, like, um, like a, um, I think we think it will do a king size quilt. Okay. So, um, and then this is that other fabric. And uh, if you've never used um, art gallery fabrics before, um, they're, the gray good that they start with um, is just substantially softer than most of any of the fabrics that we have access to. And it's, um, so it's really, really pretty. Hmm. Um, Bernadette said that she used the extra weight and have a hard time dissolving the threads no matter how wet I get them. You so she's to gonna try. Yeah, you definitely have to like you have to wet it and rub. So I was using the um, same fabric folding pen just to show you guys because that's what I had here that had water in it. But I generally prefer the Aqua Pen, yeah, which is made by Soline, and that has a little bit stronger nub on it, mm -hmm. and they also have replaceable nubs. Yes. So I have replaced mine because you get it wet and then you, ha you have to give it friction to get it to go away. It just doesn't magically disappear. Right. You have to give it a little up on there. Um, but I have used both and not noticed any real difference, but you do have to rub for sure. Yep. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so this is fun. We have this already cut in, it's in a bag for you all, all separately. Yep. And then we have some different colors of this. So this is the background fabric that she's using. So we've got 
some of that left because you didn't use all of all of the bolts that you ordered yep. for that. And yep. then we also have some teals. I think that's what we started mm -hmm. with. A couple of different teals and a couple gray, of, I think. Yeah. Teal and gray. I dropped a piece Oh, we'll get that later. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, the aqua pen is my preferred fringe tool for sure. Um, it has like a syringe type draw. So you pull the water in and then um, squeeze the little spot that's very clearly marked and the water gets the tip wet. And then when you rub, um, that usually works pretty well. But you are right. If you are not giving it friction, it won't just magically disappear on its own. It doesn't yeah. do that. No. And a lot of times you don't want to submerge the entire project. Right. So, yes. and I don't, Q-tips do not work for me to get it, rid of that. Me either. I can't get them wet enough. I can't enough. get them wet enough to have that do what I need it to do. One more word, two more letters. So cute. That is the interesting picture. Uh -huh. But you know, you can't always, when you type in a font, you don't get to tell it where to stitch in what order and, no. and whatever. So it kind of does its own thing, but. Last letter. So we're wrapping it up here. I just popped right out of there. That's it. It didn't bounce towards the needle, so True. we're good. All right. So that completes the March Kimberbell Digital Dealer project. Yep. I'm going to um, change that so you can see. So there's those machine embroidery has my, and there's the heart. Mm -hmm. It says chenille. We have our applique butterfly. We have our not yet fringed flowers. We have our uh, piecing in the hoop, red work, and then decorative stitches there in the center. And the red there is just uh, part of the chenille that fell off. Sorry about yeah. that. I didn't clean that off yet. And in whole, there you go. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Yes. All right. There you go. Well, thank you guys for joining us. It's always fun to be able to stitch out these Kimberbell projects. Absolutely. And uh, sometimes we learn something new. Sometimes we learn some things that we didn't like. Sometimes we learn <laughs> some things that we did like. Uh, sometimes we make some mistakes. So we do uh, sure do appreciate you joining us. Um, if you could um, remember to uh, like this and maybe share our video, that would be great. Subscribe. Um, subscribe and then you'll get notifications when we go live again um a little uh heart or a happy face or whatever goes a long way in helping people find our videos and Absolutely. we greatly appreciate it so oh i did get our names in that so um i'm sarah and this is lisa, Hi, I'm lisa. and thanks, uh, thanks so much a little bit with us for joining we'll us see you next time yep bye All right, bye